what are your thoughts as you open your first training camp as a NBA head coach? You know, the, the funny thing is the, uh, the basketball part is probably the easiest <laughs> transition in this job. Uh, I've talked about it through the uh, uh, hiring stage, you know, when I first got here uh, through media day um, and the managing of people um, is probably the biggest hurdle or difference going from lead assistant, associate head coach now into this head coach seat. The basketball part has been great because uh, you, you're on the court, you're in your element, uh, you start implementing things, you know, as you go, uh, you see the response and the positive uh, uh, rapport that you develop with players on the court. So all those things are transitioning, uh, moving in the right direction. So it, it feels natural. It's a good feel. And I want to ask you about um, Corey Kispert, because you come over from a team that had a really strong track record in player development. As you take a guy with that much talent as a first round pick, just kind of what do you think is a proper way to bring them along in their first training camp? Well, I'll say this. I mean, just seeing his maturation from summer league to this point um, is exciting. Uh, and it's also a good indicator of where he'll be, you know, throughout the preseason and into the regular season. Obviously, nothing is promised. Uh, all rookies go through it, you know, including rookie coaches. So yeah, there's some hurdles and some bumps. Um, it's a learning curve that we all have to go through. Uh, but he's he's shown the development. He's shown progress. And it's uh, exciting to see a guy like that uh, who's been well coached. He's been uh, a four year guy. So he's been in those big moments. Um, he knows how to play the game. He knows his strengths. He understands his weaknesses. He's done a tremendous job of, of getting better every day. Ava. Hey, Wes. Nice to see you. Um, Likewise. Just Wondering, since you guys have been in since Labor Day, what's what's been kind of priority number one in getting all the guys together? Just developing that on-court chemistry. Um, you know, aside from the schematics, uh, understanding terminology, getting us uh, reassimilated uh, with each other. It's a new group. Um, it's essentially a new team. So having those guys be on the floor together, uh, whether it's drills, playing open run, uh, getting the opportunity to get to know each other on and off the court, but also developing an understanding of uh, each other's strengths and weaknesses, uh, where, where a guy likes his shots, uh, what kind of actions um, does he prefer? You know, some of the simple details of, you know, what, what post, what box does he like to, to post on? So all those little things you kind of pick up as a player um, and those things you don't necessarily teach because uh, we're not really putting in uh, offense per se. We're, we're just allowing those guys to feel it, play together and learn each other. And then I, I know you've had conversations with Brad before you even kind of met him in person and started working. Um, but what, I guess, when you have those initial kind of conversations, what are you trying to accomplish? Are you just saying like, hey, this is who I am. This is what I'm about. Um, can you give us a little bit of insight into what you talked about with, with Brad and then also Spencer? Well, I think with both guys, there's, there, those initial conversations are no different than any other organic relationship that you would develop with someone you don't know. Yeah, I think it's just uh, get, to know, get to know each other. You know, how do we, how do we think, you know, uh, what, uh, what are your aspirations? What inspires you? Um, you know, obviously this game has been good to both guys. They're very, very extremely talented players. And, um, you know, I think to, to have them together is a huge benefit to me as a, as a first time head coach, but to the organization, but to get to know those guys on a personal level, that's how you build the rapport. Um, and I think once that foundation is established, you can kind of start implementing some of the the work related things, but uh, just kind of get to know them, who, who they are as people, what, what makes them tick. Dave. Hey Wes, uh, what, what excites you most about the roster you're, you're dealing with? Is it the options as, as I look at that? I mean, everybody seems like they can play a million positions. So that must excite you as a coach. The flexibility, depth, uh, you know, it's really exciting. You have so many options. You can, you can play small, you play big, bump guys down. You have multiple uh, ball handlers who can create, finish. Um, obviously, our, the, the amount of shooting we can put on the floor is a, a tremendous dynamic to have. Um, but it gives you a lot of flexibility. Um, and I think it also allows you defensively to do a lot of different things. You know, you're going to have the mobility to fly around. You can switch. Uh, so it gives you a lot of options to, uh, to play with and to have that. Uh, is a is a huge plus. Do uh, a lot of work to be done, but do you allow yourself a moment like, wow, this is pretty cool. This is this is going to be my team and, and my training camp. I don't think it's pro I've processed that yet. And you know, I know we talked earlier, but uh, it'll probably hit me um, opening night. You know, 
the building's packed the first time I walk out there in, a, in an official capacity for the first regular season game. I think that's probably when it when it, it hit me. But uh, right at this point, it, it hasn't felt much different. You know, I think, you know, I've, I've had a prominent voice in, in my past role, which has been great. It's been a benefit to me. Uh, so it's uh, a little different, but for the most part, it's uh, been somewhat routine. Neil? Hey, Coach, nice to see you again. Tommy, talked a, little, Tommy talked a little bit about, you know, putting some caution, you know, things are going to take time. It's a new group, like you said. It's a new, you know, coaching staff philosophy that you're implementing. What are some of the near-term goals, you know, the next week or month that you can look off and say, yes, we checked these boxes and we're headed in the right direction? When we come to like the, the small item, the checklist things, it's more of a defensive, offensive schematics. Those are the, the, the minute details. Um, you know, we're not going to talk wins and losses or, you know, those overall projections. I think, you know, those will come. We have our own internal goals and those will stay internal. Uh, but, uh, you know, our, our job is to compete and put ourselves in the best position to win nightly. I think we'll do that. Uh, I think these guys are ready to go. They're, they're chomping at the bit and they put in the time. So, uh, you know, that point of starting the season the right way, that sense of urgency. Um, I know it's a, it's been an issue at times and whether it's injuries, COVID, whatever it may be, but, you know, that's our priority. We want to get off to the right, on the right foot, uh, start training camp the right way, um, get into the preseason and, and get off to a, a good start as the regular season unfolds. And I know you weren't here last season, but, you know, obviously with the pandemic training camp being very limited, it was, you know, tough. This season, would you say it's, you know, almost a semblance of back to normal or are there still some hindrances in what you guys can do? Well, I think we have to be smart with what we do. And, you know, we're always going to follow the, the guidelines of the CDC and the, you know, the, the city of DC as far as the NBA protocol. Uh, and that's ever evolving. You know, I think as this, uh, the pandemic hopefully slows, but it's, not, it's, it's going to be with us, obviously, for some time. So we have to be smart in how we work, um, but also be mindful that this thing's still out there. And we, we, we don't want any setbacks, but that's the reality of it. It's, it's here to stay. Thanks, Coach. Mm -hmm. Christy. Hey there, Coach. Uh, great to see you again. Um, with what you said about not necessarily adding in any schematic things on offense or defense, what kind of identity do you want to see for this team just in seeing them in open run capacities? Well, I think even before the open run, I mean, we're establishing a work culture. And not to say that it wasn't there because these guys have worked ex exceptionally hard. Um, but just that mindset of every day, there's no shortcuts. Um, you know, there's very, very few off days. Uh, what can we do right now to help put us in the best position? Uh, like I said, to get, a, get us off to a, a good start as the season develops. Uh, so th these guys have done an unbelievable job of putting in the time, putting in the work, uh, being available and, uh, you know, being here every day, whether it's the lifts, the, you know, the open runs, the individual workouts, um, they, they really have, uh, and it's great to see because that's something you, you hope that you don't have to teach. Uh, so to have them do it on their own is great. And just one more thing. Um, you said that in terms of getting to know um, Bradley and Spencer a little bit better, you wanted to know what inspired them. But what inspires you now as a head coach? What is your inspiration in this role? Well, I think the players. Um, you know, it's, this is a new role for me. It's a, it's a new test. Um, and I think just as we challenge players to be better versions of themselves, we as coaches uh, should do the same thing. Um, so, you know, obviously I feel like I'm ready for this opportunity. I'd like to say I'll be a better version of myself next season than I am right now. Uh, so the expectations are the same uh, you know, that I would hold the group to. Let's be uh, the best version of you um, and, and bring that effort every night. Thank you so much. Olivia. Hey coach, good to see you again. Um, I, we talk about, you know, there's a lot of new players on this team that have never played in front of these fans before. I mean, of course, being on the opposite team, but not playing with the Wizards. How do you prepare them for playing with this organization in front of this fan base in D.C.? I don't think it's that much different. Uh, I think, you, you know, every time you step between the lines, your focus should be on just that. Um, you know, you perform at a high level. This is what you do. This is what you get paid to do. So, uh, you know, the, the fans, of course, that energy is contagious. It's infectious. So, you know, whether that, that's a different city or it's here. Um, but I do know the, the fan base in this town is, um, 
is, is craving, you know, a winning, a winning atmosphere. Um, you know, a team that uh, is going to compete and fight, do what they need to do on the floor to, to eke out a win. Um, but they also want to see a team that's going to play together. So, you know, I think keeping that in mind, but, uh, you know, from the actual feel of it, I don't know how much different it is. Um, but I do know that, that this fan base has a powerful voice. It's one that uh, gives you a, a, certainly an edge at home. Thanks, Coach. Mm -hmm. Quinn. Nice to meet you, Coach. Um, we talked to Tommy Shepard yesterday, and he specifically talked about the defense and you coming in and trying to establish some type of identity in that's on that side of the floor. Um, what was your assessment of the defense last year, and what do you look to specifically pinpoint this year in order to improve uh, the team's defense? Well, I, I don't want to get into kind of you know what what they did or didn't do last year. I think that's unfair on on some level because I wasn't here, um, and it's easy to look at things through a certain lens and say, well, the metrics and the stats say this. That doesn't mean that's that's what's being taught. So I think it's a little unfair to cast any indictment. Um, uh, but the numbers are, you got to own that. So um, there are certain areas that we can improve on and, and defensive side of it is for sure an area of concentration. Um, I think the overall thought of it being a mindset, it, it, it's not just on one person that, uh, you know, th this has got to be a part of who we are, what we are daily. Um, and I think if we lay that foundation, guys buy in, um, you'll, you'll start seeing the, you know, the benefits of that. And what would you say has maybe impressed you the most about the group that you have currently um, with camp right around the corner? Oh, I just think the commonality that they've shown. You know, I think they're all eager to get started. They, they've shown that the, their willingness to play the right way, uh, that they're, they're competitive, but they compete with composure, that they push each other. Um, and I think, you know, they're starting to, you know, hold each other accountable. And that's even before we have really put, you know, any schemes in. So it's great that they're, they're starting to communicate on the floor, figure it out and talk it, uh, talk it out amongst themselves. I think the really good teams do that. Uh, if it always has to come from myself or one of my bench staff, you're only going to be so good. Uh, I think that m the more they, you know, take, take the reins and put the onus on themselves and each other, uh, the better your team will be. Thank you, sir. Christos. Hello, coach. Hope you're doing well. What is what result will make you satisfied at the end of the season overall? Can you repeat the question? I apologize. Yes. What result will make you satisfied at the end of the season overall? Well, I think it's, uh, you know, from an internal view, it's, you know, and I've said this before, are we getting better? Um, you know, Coach Malone always used to say it, and we, we kind of look at each other, you know, in a weird way, but you're either getting better or you're getting worse. Um, and, and I think that that's true because, you know, everyone else is having the same meeting on Monday afternoon, Monday evening. Um, so our mindset is let's not just talk about it. Let's, let's be about it. Let's live it. Um, and, you know, I don't know if that translates into X number of wins, um, but you'll know it, you'll, you'll feel it. And obviously we'll have the uh, feel and a pulse of that group. And I think the more buy-in you get, the earlier that happens, um, you'll start seeing it, you know, coalesce at the right time. And also, how important for you is to have a player like Bradley Bill? And what is the most challenging part for you to have a player like him? Oh, he's, I mean, he's multifaceted. I mean, he's one of the most dynamic offensive players in the game. I think what's lost um, is his defensive acumen. He has the ability to do it. And, you know, I think sometimes the, the burden for him offensively was so high in past seasons that it, it took a little bit out of him. But to have the depth, the flexibility that we have, I think it gives him an opportunity to uh, take possessions off on the offensive end. Um, so, you know, maybe that gives him the legs and the energy to, to do it on the uh, defensive end as well. Um, you know, you hope also that uh, that depth will maybe reduce some of his minutes and his workload. So now he can be fresher at the end of games be fresher going into March and April. And, you know, you're making your playoff push. Zach? Hey, Coach. Uh, great to see you again. Um, I have a Rui-related question. Um, I think you could say that Rui's had a very solid amount of starting experience and production in his first two seasons. Um, what's the next step in his progression, do you think? Well, I think, you know, anything, you know, after, you know, year two, this experience with the Olympics has been a tremendous thing for him. Um, he, he actually could take the reins of that group, be the focal point of them uh, for them offensively, probably be the voice 
for them in the locker room. So that's going to expedite his maturation, uh, which I think will uh, be a tremendous help to this group. Um, it kind of bl bleeds right into the, the point I just made with our flexibility and depth. You got another guy who's, you know, been there, done it, done it on a high level. Although he's young, he's, he's played in significant minutes um, at a, on a high stage. So um, th that opportunity, that experience, you can't simulate that. So I think it, it'll pay dividends for him individually and also for us as a group. Thank you. Howard? Thank you. Um, how does Denny look so far and what are your plans for him at this point? He's been, he's been great. He, he looks, uh, he looks strong. Um, he's moving well. He's, he's put in a ton of time and, you know, I know we've talked about bringing him along slowly, ramping him up as is cautiously, but he's, he looks, he looks great. He, he's eager to go. And uh, I'm excited to see uh, how it translates. Um, I think for him, his, his next, the next iteration for him is, being a playmaker, playing, uh, you know, as a secondary ball handler at times as a primary ball handler. Um, and I think the flexibility and versatility that that allows us to move Brad and Spencer around, other guys around, uh, so now they don't have to orchestrate the offense as much. They don't have to be the focal point of it as much, um, you know, with another guy who can make plays. His size, I think, will uh, benefit us defensively, uh, give us the ability to switch a lot. Uh, his shot making, and, and, you know, along with the other guys, with Kyle, with, with AG, with Avis, uh, you know, Cor, you know, Isaiah, all those guys. So the shooting has been uh, amplified, and, and you cannot have enough shooting on the floor in uh, in an NBA game. Alif, it's good to meet you. Um, obviously, with training camp just around the corner, players, and I'm sure yourself, you have some sight of what you expect from them coming in as a team. I'm curious to know from your perspective, have you set any goals for yourself about how you're going to judge yourself at the start and at the end of camp? That's a good question. Uh, you know, I haven't really given it a ton of thought um, as far as my own performance. Um, and I think, you know, that's something that uh, I've talked about to some degree with my staff, um, just as we do player evaluations at the end of the season. Um, I plan on doing staff evaluations and it's not just me evaluating my staff. It's also my staff evaluating me. So you know, not necessarily in training camp or through training camp, but I'm, I've always been uh, open to feedback. And, you know, I've, I've asked this of my staff con consistently from summer league till this point, we'll continue to do so. Challenge me, push me. Um, you know, you don't have to always agree with me because uh, trust me, I have answers. That doesn't mean they're always right. So, uh, you know, I want, you know, it to be an open forum, uh, the guys who have, you know, a vast amount of experience, you know, on tons of different levels, you know, whether that's the G League from Europe, uh, NBA and college, you know, ranks, I think it's important to bring best practices, the best ideas forward. Um, we get caught at times as, as coaches into doing what we've done because we're comfortable doing it. But, uh, you know, stepping out of your box a little bit, continue to learn and as the game adjusts, as the game grows, you know, finding nuanced ways to implement some things that can help your group. Chase. Uh, yes, as you enter camp, sort of what roster decisions, role decisions will you be evaluating over the next few weeks? Uh, what kind of do you think you have to settle on um, as you evaluate through training camp and preseason? Well, I think a lot of that's up in the air. I think the competitive nature of this group uh, the depth, you know, if some people may look at that as a, as a problem, I look at it as a plus, um, you know, at times it, you're going to have to make some tough decisions, but, you know, I think, uh, we're going to do what's best for the group. Um, and I think putting the best pieces on the floor together that complement each other at that time. So, yeah, I, I never want to lock myself into saying, you know, these guys will play the X number of minutes or this guy, that guy, I think, uh, it'll play itself out. Uh, obviously we have some ideas. Uh, some that I'm, I'm not willing to share, but yeah, I think it's uh, it's important to also sit back and let the competition play itself out. And I, I know you've been asked many times about uh, just coming back to where you grew up, but now that you've uh, you know officially kind of settled in uh, back as a Washingtonian, I guess just what, what's that been like for you after being away so long? I got to get reacquainted with the traffic, so <laughs> that's probably the 
the biggest thing. Uh, but it's been great. Uh, I think you know we've gotten the kids settled. So school is uh, going off, uh, going well. Um, we're still in the process of kind of finding a permanent home, but uh, more than comfortable and just kind of exploring the area, getting reacclimated, um, getting the better sense of the lay of the land, knowing now that it's changed. Ten years ago, uh, some of these areas. Uh, naval yard the, the southwest waterfront they looked a lot different so it's kind of a welcome home but also a lot of new things to enjoy and explore neil coach i think tommy mentioned that you guys were either planning or already doing two a days um at certain times you're saying you know with the preseason spaced out you know you guys have more opportunity to do that Mm -hmm. Is that more so just because new group, new coaching staff, you're trying to accelerate things as much as possible or what's the thought there? Well, there is a, you know, um, to your point, there, there are a number of days that we didn't get last year. So having that extra time is, is going to be a benefit to us. I think the other thing too, is the, the more we can be on the floor, give us opportunity to teach. I'm not married to, you know, saying, Hey, we're going to go two days for throughout the whole, but giving our, giving ourselves the flexibility and the option to do that. Um, it doesn't have to be, you know, two hours of just grinded out practice, you know, twice a day. You can also pick a segment and, you know, that first practice could just be teaching. Uh, and we need that. So, you know, you teach, you shoot, you script, uh, you move your guys around, get them up and down a little bit. The evening sessions, you know, it gives you a little bit more flexibility to get, be competitive, do more competitive drills, play live scrimmages, um, and get a real sense of if there's carryover from the morning session. So, it's, you know, it's all on paper right now, but I think as we get into camp, uh, it takes a life of its own and you just have to read, you know, where we are, um, you know, schematically, where are we with our uh, physically, do we need a little bit more? Do we need a little less? So uh, I think it will, it'll play itself out. We'll take the last question from Ava. Um, Wes, I, sorry, I had two, so now I'm deciding which one I want to go with. Um, okay, so Tommy, yesterday we talked to him and he said that Daniel Gafford is pretty locked in so far as, as a starter, on uh, at least on the first day of training camp. What have you seen from him, especially concerning his conditioning? He kind of talked to us a little bit last year about how his fitness got in the way of mm -hmm. getting more minutes and he kind of had to ask out a lot. Is he, is he looking like he's uh, where you want him to be? Without having, you know, point of reference on last year, it, I, I think he's right where we need him to be. Um, he's been working extremely hard. Uh, and, I, and I'll say this, is I haven't had... Uh, the opportunity over the past few years to have a dynamic guy like that, you know, and, you know, we, the shot blocking, uh, his ability to change shots around the rim, to run the floor, uh, finish above the rim, be a, a presence, uh, putting pressure on the rim as a roller. But, uh, you know, his, his flexibility, um, his versatility is he's very fluid. And for a lot of guys that big, it doesn't come, it doesn't come easy. Um, so, He's gifted, you know, not only athletically, but, uh, you know, I think he, he's done a great job with his body getting uh, back into shape. Um, he's playing at a pretty uh, high level right now.